to DC vs. Marvel Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, we're checking out a film from 2003. That movie is Batman, Mystery of the Batwoman. Now, I know very little about this movie. I know it's part of the DC Animated Universe. Uh, those of you who don't know what that is, uh, the DC Animated Universe was a canon made up of Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond, and any and all movies... Uh, associated with those shows. This one, as the title kind of obviously states, is tied to Batman the Animated Series. So it's going to have that art style and most of that cast. That's fine. That's awesome. Um, beyond that, I know nothing else. I know it features Bat. I know it features Bat, Bat, you know, woman, because the title kind of states that. But I don't know anything else. I don't know who the villains are. I don't know what the plot is. I know for a fact it's just over an hour and 20 minutes. At least I know that much. Um, really, guys, I'm going into this one a little bit... I'm going into this one incredibly blind. I, I, I do happen to remember seeing a trailer back in 2003, but I don't remember anything from the trailer. So the only thing I know is that Mystery of the Batwoman is a thing. So at least I, I have that to go by. Um, I have no idea, guys, if this thing is going to be any good at all. I really don't. The only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play. And I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Batman Mystery of the Batwoman. Okay, guys, I'm just going to say this. I thought it was a little bit weird when I saw when I saw Batman woman kick a crate of guns off the side of this truck, spreading tons of guns all over the fucking road. I thought that seemed a little bit weird. And she's throwing even more of them on the road. But they aren't just guns. They're laser cannons. Batwoman is spreading laser cannons all over the fucking road. That means that anybody who's just driving by can just randomly grab one, and boom, they now have a laser fucking cannon. And what the fuck are, what the fuck kind of gang is transporting laser cannons? That just seems, you'd think you'd ship them in a slightly better better fashion than just covering the boxes with cloth and then driving down the road in, in an open truck. That This whole thing seems, seems a little bit dumb, guys, but... The fact that now, but the fact that now the streets of Gotham are now littered with laser cannons just seems a little bit weird to me. Okay, so Batwoman only set a single charge. I don't think that a single charge would cause that many explosions in a building. I don't care how much ammo is in there, considering how most of it is all like energy based. It would all probably be kind of isolated to the basement. No, that one charge in the basement, which was literally just a small bomb and a little pool of pool of gas for reasons, caused the entire factory to explode. I'm not going to pretend that makes any sense cuz it really doesn't. But I mean, I guess it looked it looked sort of cool and that's really all that matters, so I guess that works. So the cocktail waitresses at the Iceberg Lounge also double as hired muscle for the Penguin. And they're shockingly effective. I will say that is definitely fucking cool, guys. It really is. Okay, I really love the fact that Penguin has a Penguin themed speed fucking boat, guys. That is so cheesy and so campy. I fucking... Love it. That was an awesome touch, guys. Well, guys, that was Batman, Mystery of the Batwoman. Let me shut that off. Okay. Good God. Um, all right. Let's do this. Uh, writing. Let's start with writing. And I want to talk about the titular mystery of the Batwoman here for just a moment. I am going to try not, I'm, I'm going to try to not spoil it, but uh, my god, it was a little it was a little bit of a cop out cop out answer on the fucking mystery. It didn't even it, it seriously didn't even feel clever. It just felt incredibly fucking stupid. And that I think guys is kind of a problem with a few things in this movie is there's a lot of questionable writing. 
Um, actually, no. Now that I think about it, there really isn't much outside of the uh, answer to the to to our uh, to our you know titular mystery and uh, the fact that they brought Bane in for the second half of the movie. I I, I guess maybe it's just me. I'm I'm kind of biased. I've never been a huge fan of Bane. At least, not the Batman the Animated Series Bane, because, and this I am going to tell you, because when Bane finally has his fight with, with Batman, it's the same fucking fight every single time. They fight, it's kind of even, Bane shoots up on tons and tons of Venom, he fucks up, he, he, he then proceeds to fuck up Batman until Batman's able to sever the fucking Venom, like Venom, Venom hose that's going from his wrist to his head, and then Batman wins. Yippee! They it, it's the same goddamn fight they they did probably about a dozen times over the course of Batman the animated series. The fact that they didn't do anything with you know Bane and even the animated series Bane is a boring character in the first place. Bringing him in in the second act is kind of sort of like a you know oh my god oh my god shit has like shit has just gotten real real moment. It didn't work for me because Penguin could have called in almost any other Batman villain who's not, you know, the fucking Joker, and it would probably have been better. You know, he could have, he could, he could have fucking called on Maxi fucking Zeus, and it would probably have been a better option than picking fucking Bane. Jesus Christ. So, beyond the few questionable writing bits, beyond the fact that the mystery is, you know, copped out in a really shit fashion, the fact that we have a shit villain enter in, in the second half, how is the rest of the movie? Well, the rest of the movie is a typical Batman the Animated Series episode stretched out to about an hour and twelve. So, yeah, I uh, said at the start that 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 this movie was just over an hour and twenty minutes. I really thought that it was. Runtime's actually an hour and fourteen, so I was a little bit off. Anyway, uh, and it's only about an hour and twelve because then you have the fucking credits. So anyway, um, it really is just an episode of Batman stretched out to, you know, just over an hour and ten minutes long. And that's fine, because the writing is, for the most part, really strong. Um, granted, it's not as good as a lot of Batman episodes I've seen, but it's but it's still functional, and it, and it still works. It's really cool that we got Penguin and Thorn back as villains. I just wish we'd gotten a better third villain than fucking Bane. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, um... Writing here is okay. Uh, there was a small problem, but that had more to do with acting than it did anything else. Um, but yeah, guys, the uh, writing here is functional. It's not fucking great. The movie, honestly, is ultimately ridiculously for fucking gettable. I think when all is said and done, I, I, I really, I really am not going to be thinking about this movie in two hours. I mean, I am probably going to have completely forgotten damn near everything that happened in this movie. After I'm done editing, editing the thing, and after I'm done editing this this video and saving it, this thing here will probably have already been wiped out of my memory because it was nothing ultimately special. It it honestly wasn't like Batman fucking like Mask of the fucking Phantasm where it felt like a bigger thing and it was worthy of being a Batman the animated series movie. No, this just felt like a, another episode and not even one of the better episodes, just a functional, decent episode. Yet writing here is just kind of bland when all is said and done. The story honestly flows, flows, you know, flows totally fine, and we're introduced to a handful of new, you know, characters in order to, in order to bulk up the, you know, like, mystery, and all of those characters are incredibly fascinating. Again, I wish that the mystery was handled better, because that was something that the Batman show was known for. Batman the Animated Series was known for having mysteries and doing awesome shit with them. The few times that they would do, like, proper, like, mystery stories, they, they did really awesome work with them. Here, it's a cheap fucking cop-out, and that, I think, is what really bothers me, is the fact that it's such a horrible, horrendous cop-out. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about writing, because there's not much to really say about writing. Let's talk about the acting. Um, we have a large portion of the Batman the Animated Series cast back, which is awesome. Uh, they did not get back uh, the original actor for the Penguin. So we are treated to David Ogden Stiers playing the Penguin, which, I'm going to say this, David Ogden Stiers was born to play the fucking Penguin. That was fantastic. That's probably some of the finest casting I've ever fucking seen. So... We have, so we have that, um, and everybody else does a really good job, except the 
Kevin Conroy. I'm not I am not complaining about his about his performance in general. This is more something that kind of fell off towards the end of the Batman animated series and it kind of leads to a little bit of a like plot hole here. Allow me to explain. In Batman the animated series, it was a really fascinating gimmick that Bruce Wayne actually altered his voice when he was Batman. So that way Bruce Wayne and Batman sounded like two different people. There is zero effort to do that here. Which um, then means that once we get to the answer of who is, who is Bat-fucking-woman, it then tells us that Batwoman should know because the character has had close contact with Bruce Wayne, has talked to Bruce Wayne, should be able to put two and two together and know that Bruce Wayne and Batman have the same fucking voice. I understand that during Batman the Animated Series, they actually would crack off jokes about how, about how Bruce Wayne and Batman have the same chin. I know that Harley once cracked off a joke like that, and it was kind of funny. Or how they're both, you know, built, how they're both built like brick, like brick fucking shit fucking houses. But the voice was kind of like the thing that like threw off everybody. And there's even a point, he even mentions how Batwoman has to, has even Batman at one point mentions how Batwoman has to alter her voice so that way no one knows. Which would probably have been more, you know, which probably would have been more impactful if Kevin Conroy would have spent five fucking seconds to up pitch his voice a bit like he used to do for Bruce Wayne back in the fucking show. It's, I understand guys, it's minor, it's pointless, it's stupid, but God damn it, it irritated me. And Kevin Conroy can do better, I know he can do better, he's demonstrated he can do better in the very show this movie's a fucking tie-in to. Okay, so... Acting is really good. Conroy, Conroy was kind of lazy, but oh well. I'm not, I'm not going to hold that against the film. I'm just going to be a little bit disappointed in Kevin fucking Conroy as an actor. That's just me. Oh well. I'm going to move on. <sighs> Animation and art. Um, I should mention that this that this movie decided to use the uh, art style from the later seasons of Batman the Animated Series. When in when when in an attempt to make it to make it stylistically similar to the Superman animated series, the art style on characters was ridiculously simplified. So most characters don't have any facial features outside of eyes, nose, and lips, unless there's a shadow cast on them. Uh, which to me has always looked ugly. It's it, it it has always looked ugly and cheap, and it just isn't as cool looking as the early seasons. But oh well. I'm again. I am not going to hold that against against the movie. It was because back in two thousand three, this was the art style which they which they which they were going for. And I'm not. And I am not about to question it. I am not going to argue it. It's just not the style that I personally would have picked. What I am going to complain about is textures. You see, I think maybe this is something that's only noticeable on the Blu-ray, but oh my god, it is so irritating. So, one thing that Batman the Animated Series was known for, and that this movie has, is the beautiful skylines, and the awesome looking buildings, and the fantastic dark skies. Everything looked beautiful. Here, I guess in order to make things look a little bit more realistic, they try to put kind of sort of like a grainy texture on buildings and walls. The problem is, instead of coming up with slightly different textures for all the different buildings and the walls in order to make things look a little bit more real, it's the same texture and it just sort of looks like someone took like television fucking static and colored it in. Now, that probably wouldn't be so bad if that texture was exclusive to buildings and, you know, like sky, like, 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 just like buildings and walls, but it's not. That same, that very same texture is found on water, it's found on windows, blackened windows it's especially noticeable in. You know, it, that fucking texture is on almost everything that is not a car or a person. And in certain scenes, it looks horribly cheap. It looks almost laughably bad. And that is something that I cannot let fucking slide. It looks hideous. And it takes the beautiful looking buildings and the awesome looking skylines and the epic looking, like, and the epic looking red, red and fucking black skies and makes it all look like one big staticky fuck off mess. Yes, they also did it on the sky. 
at least in a couple of shots, and it looked fucking terrible. I am not, I am not about to give this thing a pass on that. Also, shadow is a little bit of an issue. In fact, I actually have this thing paused right now, and I'm seeing a shot where there are two different shadows cast in the same area, and they're both two totally different, like, darknesses. You would think that the darker shadow would completely block out the lighter, the lighter shadow being cast by a picture frame, but no. No, 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 it's right there, it's cheap as shit, I'm, good god, textures and shadow in this thing were noticeably shit. Now that is probably because I'm watching it on Blu-ray. I am going to just say that right now, Blu-ray usually pops out a whole lot of detail, and this is a detail that should probably never have been put in. And it's noticeably bad, it's horrendously cheap, you probably won't notice it if you're watching it on DVD, or maybe if you're watching it on TV, if this thing ever airs on TV, but if you're watching it on, on Blu-ray, motherfuck, it stands out, and it stands out badly, and it's enough to make me just almost cringe at how horrible it looks. Anyway, um, let's move past that. My god, I never thought I'd have to complain about textures that much. Uh, our soundtrack here, uh, our, our our soundtrack and our score are fantastic. Uh, there actually is this like pop song that plays when uh, when we are in the when when we're in the iceberg lounge. It also plays over the closing credits, and it's kind of sort of catchy. It's not it's not it's not something I would run out and fucking download or buy, but it's but it it seriously is functional. I mean, it's not it, it's not friggin' terrible. And as for the score, well, it's the same kind of sweeping sweeping epic, sweeping epic or it's the sweeping epic or orchestral score that we that you should be used to if you ever watched Batman the animated series. And that much is amazing. I cannot, I cannot fault that at all. Our sound mix here is, for the most part, decent. Uh, there were certain times I had to turn the volume down because bombs, because bombs fucking going off were a little bit too friggin' loud. And then, and then when we got to a quieter scene, I could barely fucking hear it because I had to turn the TV down that fucking much. That honestly is more of a personal thing. Sound mix could probably have been balanced out a little, just, just a little, just a little bit better, but it's not horrible. Um, ultimately, guys, can I recommend Batman Mystery of the Batwoman? Oh, boy. Um, if you can find it ultra cheap, yeah. Uh, if you can find this thing for, like, next to nothing, preferably on DVD, go for it. Um, but to buy the Blu-ray, because of the horrible texturing on everything, and that is a detail that normally pops out more on Blu-ray than it does on DVD. I'm going to tell you, avoid the fucking Blu-ray. It looks ugly as fucking sin. In fact, that is probably the one reason why I'm not going to watch this thing a second time on Blu-ray, because it just because it just looks like my TV is staticky, and my TV shouldn't be because it's a high-def set, and it just, irritate, it just irritates the shit out of me. That and the horrible... Horrible answer to the fucking mystery. I really hated that. Uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of Bane, and Conroy was kind of lazy in this. I have plenty of issues that would probably keep me from watching it a second time. But hey, I am happy that I got to watch it. That I got to watch it once, and it was certainly worth watching once. Not sure personally if it'd be worth watching a second time, but it might be worth watching a second time to you. So if you can find it really cheap, or if you can find it to rent somewhere, go ahead. Go ahead, pick it up, or download it on fucking Amazon, or watch it on Netflix, whatever the hell. It It's totally worth watching once, but I but I really am not sure if I could recommend a buy. Again, I, I, I probably could on DVD, but on Blu-ray, no. Fuck that, no, fuck, no, fuck that thing. No. Uh, uh, this, guys, is probably the only time I am, I am actively telling you to not buy a fucking Blu-ray, because... It brings out too much fucking detail and makes the whole thing look like a huge, ugly, fuck-off mess. So, that's probably a first for this series. Now, Batman Mystery of the Batwoman came off the Amazon wishlist. The person who sent it in was Robert. Please, guys, swing on over to Robert's Amazon profile. Check out everything he has. I have I have provided a link for you down in, down in the video's description. Please, go over there and read everything he has. Robert, dude, I thank you. you you've sent in a ton of movies for, for this series. I've been sitting on this one for quite a while. I finally got the opportunity to watch it. 
and granted, I mean, it's and granted, it's not as good as I as I would have hoped. But honestly, I would not have known that if you hadn't have sent it in. And for that, I thank you, dude. You fucking awesome once more guys please swing over to robert's amazon profile check out everything he has over there he has a ton and i mean a ton of written he has a ton of written reviews read those and what the hell go and buy a few things on fucking on fucking amazon there's always awesome shit on amazon anyway i kind of feel like watching more fucking batman and the penguins really campy boat just it instantly reminded me of the '60s bat of the '60s Batman show, probably because the movie from the '60s Penguin had a penguin had a, had like a penguin paint job on his fucking sub, and it looked awesome. I'm gonna go watch some of the '60s Batman show. That is sounding fucking awesome right now, and that show is always worth friggin' watching. So anyway, guys, that is gonna do it for this installment of Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.